So I have um, something that was laid heavily on my heart just now. Um, and I had to go to the dollar store to get a Bible because I didn't bring mine with me. And I was praying the whole time that um, what was laid on my heart would be backed up with when I opened the Bible. Um, that God would just reveal exactly what he had to say because I knew that it was something very urgent and um, it's time time is ticking by fast guys and um, it's an it's an urgent it's an urgent plea an urgent cry if you don't know the Lord yet if you're putting it off You don't know the day or the hour of of Christ's return, but you don't know when you're going to die either. You could die today. You could die tonight. You could die in your sleep. You could die driving home. And where are you going to go? Where are you going to end up? Where's your eternity going to be? Are you going to be tormented in the flames of hell for all eternity? Or are you going to spend eternity with the Lord and Savior, the one that gave his life for you, the one that died on the cross. If you don't think you can be redeemed, if you think that you've done something so bad that God doesn't want you, that's a lie from Satan. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said to the the thief next to him, the, the thief asked for forgiveness and Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Guys, there is nothing, nothing Jesus will not forgive you for. You are just as precious to him as the person next to you. Just as precious to him as Joe Biden is to him. He loves everyone so much. If you have a child, there's just that's just a glimpse of the love that he has for you. His love is greater than the deepest part of the ocean. It's greater than the the depths of outer space. And he wants you to know that and he wants you so bad. His time is going by, guys. We're about to see something both wonderful and terrifying coming very shortly. I, I'm not sure what it is, but it's something that I, I felt the urge and I prophesied about um, earlier this year in February. I had warned my church. I don't know if they took it seriously or not, but something big is coming and you have to be ready. You got to have your heart right with the Lord. Get the anger out of your heart. Forgive each other. If you have something against somebody else, let it go. Give it to God. If you're harboring, if you're harboring hatred or anger, you got to give that over. The greatest, the greatest thing you can do is love. If you have nothing else to give, you got to give love. And if you don't know how to love, you got to ask for love. I struggle with that. I ask God daily, God, I need more of your love because I have nothing left of me, of my flesh. I need your love. And we're going to come to a point where we might have to rely solely on the Lord to provide. To provide food, to provide water, to provide clothing or shelter or a miracle. You got a broken leg, you can't get to the hospital. What are you going to do? So, to get back to the verse that I was given, I opened up this Bible, and you're going to have to bear with me because it's the King James Version. It's the only thing the dollar store had. Um, but it's in Habakkuk. I opened right to Habakkuk 2 1 through 20. And 
I'm going to go back to my first couple videos, my dreams that were given to me um, the end of last year and the beginning of this year. That's when they happened. And I had been praying over them, what I should do with them. And so the Lord gave me the green light to, to put them on, on YouTube. And um, I, I really did not think that it would get as many out as many views as it did. Honestly, honestly, I was happy with seven, seven people that heard the message that God gave me to share with everybody else. And, um, that's, it's, it's such an amazing blessing that I'm, that, that the Lord chose me to be used. It's just, he wants to use you too in the same way. So anyways, here's Habakkuk. 2, 1 through 20. And I also want to point out before I get to that, that life is not going to be, especially, especially the Christian life is not going to be flowers and roses and good times. It's said that in revelation. We've known that since, since you were born, since you were, you were born again and you knew what, um, what the Bible has to say. If you dig deeper, if you read revelations, you read Corinthians, you read anything. It's not unicorn farts and roses. There's some, there's some gross things in there. There's some nasty things in there. There's some crazy things in there. And you know what? It will come to pass. And no matter how much you want to listen, you want to tickle your ears to the people who, who are saying what you want to hear, go ahead, but you're missing out. You're missing out and you're going to miss the boat. So here's what Habakkuk has to say. I stand up. I stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run with who may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And guys, when when I had those dreams, um, it was I've had dreams before, but I um I was younger and younger in my faith and um didn't put two and two together. But now I know that when I get um a prophetic vision or dream. I heard once that the people who have those see way off in the distance. We're the watchmen on the wall. We can see thousands of miles away where our job is different than, than say, a pastor's job. Pastor's job is closer to the flock, and we all have our jobs, and we all have our responsibilities, and it's our job to come to know Christ and to figure out what he has, what job he has for us. So I'll continue. Um, verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth, transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither kepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him ladeth himself with thick clay shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for booties unto them because thou hast spoiled many nations all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and up for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwelleth therein does that sound like does that sound like america or what the whole world, actually, but I know it's here. 
Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, and that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame by the house, by cutting off many people, and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establish a city of it by iniquity. What are we doing to the unborn children right now? Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in, very, in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. Man, it, I just feel like he's just talking straight to America right now. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and the waters cover as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that grieveth his neighbor drink, that pourest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. How proud are people to make other people fall into sin? Just cheering them on, egging them on, joining with them. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on the glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts, which made them afraid, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and all of the dwell therein. What profiteth the given, the graven image that the maker thereof hath given it, the molten image, and the teacher of the lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein, to make dumb ki- idols? Woe unto him that saith, saith to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth keep silence before him. How many, how many images, how many graven images have we put in front of the Lord? What, and and guys, it's not just, what are you looking at? It's not necessarily an image. What do you spend your time doing? What do you spend your time thinking about? Is it God? Is it your day? Is it your job? What time do you spend with the Lord? I challenge you to write down your time. Your time in prayer from beginning to end. Your time reading the Bible from beginning to end. How much are you thinking about him? Pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean necessarily mean you're you're on your knees all day long, but it means that you're continually talking to the Lord. You're continually having that conversation and building that relationship because once whatever is coming comes, it might be too late to start that relationship and to really get your feet dug deep in the sand into making your feet like cement so you're grounded and rooted so you're not easily uprooted and changed and afraid the spirit of fear is heavy and deep in the land are you afraid to die you shouldn't be if you're afraid to die that's a problem because what is your life about if your life isn't for him and everything you do and everything you have if you're not willing to turn all that over to him, then your life is meaningless. Your life is your life will you will be very disappointed when you die cuz you're either going to die or get raptured. That's your only choice. Don't lose this opportunity that you have right now. Our time of grace, our period of grace is almost done. It's almost up. And if you, if you think it's too late for you, it's not. That's a lie. 
That's a lie from Satan. Do, do not believe it. I'm telling you right now. God wants you. God wants you so much. All you have to do is ask. Ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. And turn everything you have. Tell him, take it, God. If you want it, you can have it. If you want my children, take them. If you want my husband, take them. If you want my house, take it. If you want my money, take it. If you die in the name of the Lord, that is the greatest, your greatest reward you could ever, ever imagine. will be waiting for you. Remember, it'll only hurt a second. Don't be afraid of death. Embrace it. Just like the disciples did. The disciples were were killed a lot. Most of them were killed pretty awfully. And in Revelation it says that basically that's what's coming for his people. Do it now and get your feet rooted and grounded so they will not move. When whatever wave comes upon us. I really hope you listen and that your heart. And I, I, this is another thing I want you to know. Before, before I record these videos, I pray and I fast that your hearts will be opened and soft and moldable for the Lord. That he'll speak to your soul. That he'll move your spirit. That's the only reason I'm doing this, guys. It's not for... It's not for me. It's not my opinion. It's what the Lord puts on my heart to, to, to share with you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. I'm beyond excited to be able to share with you. So I hope you have a great night.